Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video, we are going to discuss that how we can model different amplifier circuits. So you are familiar with the operation of the basic operation amplifier circuits. So a non-inverting amplifier is shown in front of you. The gain of this non-inverting amplifier is given as the ratio of this feedback resistance with the input resistance. So output V naught is equal to minus R F by R one into input. So the transfer function now can be written like this. That is V naught by V i that is equal to minus R F by R one, and that is called the gain of this amplifier. So now if I take the Laplace transformation, I will get this equation V naught in estimate divided by V i in estimate that is equal to minus R F over R one. So we can represent this system like that. We have the input V i and the output is V naught where the transfer function is constant and that constant is equal to minus R F by R one. And the negative sign is indicating that your output voltage will be out of phase with respect to your input voltage. Okay, now let's look at this circuit. Uh, it is an integrated circuit. The feedback resistance is replaced by the capacitor. Okay, so in order to develop the transfer function, first of all we represent this in uh, in terms of the frequency domain impedance. So the capacitance impedance in the frequency domain is one by C S. So this is the impedance. Now using the same expression for the gain as we have already discussed. That the gain of this uh, inverting amplifier is given as the ratio of the impedance in the feedback path with the input impedance. So that you can see one by C S divided by R one is the uh, gain of this one. So that can be written as minus one by R one divided by C into S. So one over S represents the integration. So basically, the output is equal to minus one by R C integration of the input with respect to time. That's why we call that it's an integrated circuit. And in the frequency domain, your integration is represented by one by s, so that you can see over here. So we can model uh, this uh, integrated circuit with the help of that one. That our input is V i, that you can see. And first of all, we have the gain minus one by R C, that is this one. And the transfer function is simply one by s, that is the transfer function of the integrator, and you get the output. So you can represent this circuit with the help of uh, this block diagram. Okay, now. Um, You can add another stage uh, of the amplifier to get the gain. So this is an integrated circuit, and this is simply the uh, amplifier inverting amplifier. Both of the, uh, these are in the inverted configuration. So output of this one will be minus one by R one C one into S, and the output of this one will be minus R three by R two into whatever is the input over here. The input is V zero one, right? So uh, the transfer function for the second stage and the transfer function for the first stage. But the output of this is multiplied with the gain of this function to get the output. So net transfer function of this circuit will be equal to the product of the transfer function of this one multiplied by the product uh, multiplied by the transfer function of this part. So that is R three by R two into one by R one into C minus and minus will be cancelled out. So your net output will be in phase with the voltage because of these two stages. So how we can model in terms of the block diagram? First of all, taking the block diagram for this one, minus one by R C into one by S, right? So uh, you will get V zero one, and then it is passed through the gain or the transfer function that is minus R three by R two. So you will get V naught. So this is the block diagram representing this integrated circuit with the additional gain of R three by R two. Okay, now let's look at the other circuit that is the differentiator circuit. In the differentiator circuit, what we have. We replace this input impedance by the capacitor in for the ideal differentiator and for practical differentiator, uh, we connect the um, capacitor in parallel with the input resistance R one. Okay, so now these two are in uh, parallel, so their parallel combination is evaluated over here. This parallel combination can be written like that. The impedance of uh, this part will be given by this expression. Okay, so now how to find out the gain? The feedback resistance that is R two divided by the impedance of this part. So R two divided by the impedance of this part that is coming from here, right? So uh, the negative sign is indicating that it is the inverting amplifier because you are uh, applying the input at the negative port of that amplifier and the positive side is grounded. So if we simplify this one, I can write it uh, like this. And if I want to develop the block diagram of this one, I can. The write it like that that uh, R one C one into S plus one. This is the transfer function. So first of all, our input is multiplied with this one, and the output of this one is then further multiplied with this R two by R one. So we have this gain R two by R one 
and then we get the output v naught okay we can uh, discuss it in another way let's suppose that uh, uh, the input is first multiplied with this one r1 and c1 right and then it passes through a transfer function s okay and the input directly going over here because um, from this expression i can also write it like that that v naught is equal to minus r2 by r1 into um, v1 into r1 c1 s plus 1 right and taking this v1 on this side so uh, v1 is over here as the input it will be first multiplied with r1 into c1 s and it should also be uh, multiplied with 1 so the gain over here the unity gain and uh, through this path it is available at this point so basically this part and uh, then vi multiply by r1 into c1 then multiply with s you will get this part so you will get this term right so that is available over here so addition of these two terms will give you the net term so over here what you will get v1 r1 uh, sorry uh, vi r1 c1 into s in this path and then in this path vi plus vi at this point and then that will be multiplied with this minus r2 by r1 over here to get the output voltage okay so um, what is the importance of representing it uh, like this over here you can see that uh, now we have two paths when we are going to apply the input the input is going through this part one is the differentiating part because s represents the derivative so you have the gain in this path and the derivative action and this is the direct path right so this is basically representing that your input is differentiated and it is also available directly there may be certain gain over here as well right so we call it the proportional derivative circuit where input has reached to the output one through the derivative part and other through the uh, direct path or the proportional path okay now let's uh, um, introduce a gain along with this pd circuit proportional derivative circuit so let's add another stage of the inverting amplifier that is this one so what will be the transfer function this term will be multiplied with r4 by r3 in the negative sign so that negative sign will cancel this negative sign right so the net transfer function will be given by this equation that is relating your output voltage and the uh, input voltage right so this is the gain uh, if we rearrange this one we can write it r2 by r1 that is the gain because of these two resistances then r4 by r3 this is the gain because of these two resistances and uh, this is the um, part because of this capacitor that you have connected across the input so um, this part if, if we multiply it with this one this is the derivative path and it will be multiplied with this one right and then it will be multiplied with the input as well so one is the derivative term and one is the proportional term so this is representing the pd circuit with the uh, gain additional gain circuit that is r4 by r3 okay now let's discuss the proportional integrator so for integration what we are going to do over here you can see uh, in the feedback path we have connected a capacitor c1 so what will be the transfer function of this one feedback path impedance divided by the input impedance so these two are in series so their impedances will be added up r2 plus 1 by cs divided by r1 that is the input impedance and negative sign because of the inverting configuration so simplifying this one we will get this transfer function okay so we can write this transfer function like that in two parts r2 by r1 if we simplify um, uh, c1 and c1 will be cancelled out and s and s will be cancelled out over this term so we will be left with only r2 by r1 and with this one we will get 1 by r1 c1 uh, s okay so mm, this is the uh, transfer function okay so we can represent in terms of block diagram like that um, uh, i can say that uh, input um, one path for the, because this input from here uh, will be if, if i move it to this side let me write it properly this will be equal to minus r2 by r1 into uh, vi and then minus uh, vi by r1 c1 s so now let's take it one by one first of all vi um, into minus 1 by r1 c1 that is this one we are going over here and then it will be multiplied with 1 by s that is the integrator so this is the integration path and vi 
into minus r2 by r1 so that is this one it is this path so both of these will be added up together because the negative sign has already been accommodated over here so you are just going to add up these two and you will be getting the v naught that is equal to no, v naught right so one is the proportional part uh, path this one is the proportional path and this one is the integration path so we call it proportional integrated circuit right and um, later on you will see that that we use it as a controller so pi controller is represented by this block diagram and the transfer function of this uh, pi controller is uh, uh, this one okay now if we add an additional uh, gain so um, let's suppose this is the additional gain that we are going to introduce then uh, this output will become input of this part so we have the transfer function of uh, this portion that is coming from here so that is this one multiply by the gain of this path so that is r4 by r3 and the negative sign of this one will cancel the negative sign of this one so net sign is positive okay so rearranging this one i can write it uh, like this and if i develop the block diagram of this one basically along with this diagram that is over here we have introduced this r4 by r3 so this is the addition so this is the pi controller with an additional gain that is introduced by this uh, circuit okay now let's consider the pid proportional integration integrator and the derivative uh, differentiator okay so uh, what we are going to do uh, we are going to introduce uh, capacitor over here we are going to introduce capacitor over here so this capacitor will uh, help us to develop the uh, differentiator circuit as we have already discussed if we introduce capacitor along the input resistance so the derivative action is obtained and if we introduce the capacitor in parallel to the feedback resistance the integrator action is obtained or in series with that one uh, whatever is, is the configuration you use so over here we have discussed with the series configuration okay so this will uh, this part is basically the integrator and this will introduce the derivative action and this is simply the uh, gain so now the impedance of this path that is this one divided by the impedance of this path so that you will get by multiplying these two r1 into c1s and then divided by the sum of these and the negative sign because of inverted configuration okay so if i simplify um, this expression and uh, keep on simplifying so i will get this one as the uh, transfer function and finally i can uh, write it like that that ratio of the v01 with the vi is given by this one so this is the transfer function relating this one this output with this input right okay so now um, to find out the net transfer function uh, we i will have to multiply the transfer function of this part with the transfer function of this one because these two are in series so minus r4 by r3 so the net sign will become positive when r4 by r3 will be multiplied so this is the net transfer function and if i uh, rearrange it decompose it into uh, parts so i can write it like that s is the derivative action right 1 by s is the integrated integration action and this is the proportional part because this vi when shifted to this side will be multiplied with this one will be multiplied with this one will be multiplied with this one okay so now taking vi and uh, giving it to first of all uh, this block proportional block right vi into this one so vi into this part that is coming from here and it is going into this summer block with the positive sign right and, um, and then this vi multiply with the uh, taking the integral part multiplied with this one right so vi the gain is um, 1 by r1 c2 that is coming from here and the integrated action is 1 by s and with the positive sign and then taking the derivative action vi into r2 c1 into s so vi into r2 c1 into s so it is coming with the positive sign so all of these terms will be summed together and then the gain will be r4 by r3 that is introduced by this one so you will get the output so if you look at that one your input is passing through that one it's a proportional path right and it is the integration path integrated action and this is the derivative path so this is the pid controller proportional integral derivative controller right so uh, this is the circuit diagram for uh, this one so if i conclude what we have done we have discussed that how we can model the operational amplifier based circuit just you need to use the basic formulas for the uh, gain of the inverting amplifiers and then you will have to replace the impedances of the feedback and the input uh, path in that gain expression and you have to update that expression to get the net transfer function for your 
selected circuit okay so um let's um, end this video over here in the next we will discuss uh, about more uh, we will discuss about in detail about the first order systems thank you very much